what are these things? What's a historian? What does it even do? What is an operator workstation? What if the operator workstation goes down for an hour? What happens? How about HMI? What is an HMI? What does it even stand for? What are the different communication gateways and how do they impact the operation of the facility? You will need to know the functional differences between you know, the DCS and the PLC and the ESD and SCADA because the cybersecurity requirements are different for each. Uh, what is a vibration monitoring system? What impact it will have if that particular system goes down for an hour? And then you need vendor specific knowledge as well because in, an, in control systems environment, every vendor has their own architecture. Yoko, Honeywell architecture is different from Yokogawa architecture. Their components are different. Their connectivity is different. Their communication protocols are different. So depending upon what is installed at a client's facility, you will need to know what those technologies are and, and the details of each. And very important, industrial communication protocols, because when you're securing the networks, you need to know what protocols are, are, are on the network and how. Welcome to Global Information Security Society for the Professional of Pakistan. The opportunity here. And it's gonna kind of summarize what we just uh, mentioned that the risk is huge uh, in the OT environment, in the industrial environment, the risk is huge because there are millions and millions of industrial control systems installed and most of them are not secure. We mentioned that there is no security in the components as well as in the design, as well as in the implementation. I've seen firewall, uh, what is a firewall? Literally, I get asked this question, uh, not anymore, but up until a few years ago, firewall used to be, well, man, your client has a firewall, that's a big deal. Um, it's still a relatively new field, uh, a relatively new, meaning it's still been around for about a decade or so, but compared with IT security, OD security is still relatively new, which means there is limited resources available in the world to implement security. So if you combine this two, that you have so much demand for industrial control system security and there are limited resources available in the world, then of course that to me, it's a risk and a challenge, but also a huge opportunity for professionals like us to, to get into the OT security uh, domain. How do we do that? If, if we want to get into OT security, what do we do? Obviously, if you have information security background, then you do have a little bit of an edge, but you will need a, if you really want to do justice, and I, I say that with a certain level of, uh, I guess, uh, I, I want to be cautious about what I say, that to do justice to industrial control system, to really uh, secure these systems, not just doing something superficial, if there's a requirement to implement a firewall, I'm sure half of you would do that in your sleep. That's not a problem. But if you really want to do that justice to control system security, you need to learn about all the architectures and components and, and functionality and applications of uh, industrial control systems. You need to understand how these different, the controllers, the HMIs, the operator workstations, uh, historians, what are these things? What's a historian? What does it even do? What is an operator workstation? What if the operator workstation goes down for an hour? What happens? How about HMI? What is an HMI? What does it even stand for? What are the different communication gateways and how do they impact the operation of the facility? You will need to know the functional differences between you know, the DCS and the PLC and the ESD and SCADA because the cybersecurity requirements are different for each. Uh, what is a vibration monitoring system? What impact it will have if that particular system goes down for an hour? And then you need vendor specific knowledge as well, because in, an, uh, in control systems environment, every vendor has their own architecture. Yoko, Honeywell architecture is different from Yokogawa architecture. Their components are different. Their connectivity is different. Their communication protocols are different. So depending upon what is installed at a client's facility, you will need to know what those technologies are and, and the details of each. And very important, industrial communication protocols, because when you're securing the networks, 
you need to know what protocols are, are, are on the network and how they're how the data is flowing from one component to the other and what to allow in terms of communication, what not to allow, what's going to happen if the modbus communication goes down and all. So very uh, obviously it's a tall order, but still the more you learn about industrial control systems, the better you will be equipped to uh, design and implement OT cybersecurity. I, I show this uh, uh, <clears throat> this slide again because it, it shows the kind of different, what is an RTU, what is an IED? If you're implementing, uh, let's say, uh, cybersecurity on a substation, they will have IEDs. What is an IED? What does it do? How does it interface with an RTU? What is an MTU? What are the Modbus, DNP3, Profibus? How they connect all together? All of that you'll have to, even something as simple as remote access. In, a, in an IT environment, remote access, okay. Yeah, yeah, we have VPN connectivity and anybody can connect from VPN. Just implementing something as basic as remote access in an OT environment, it's a pain. Especially if you want to comply with the different standards that are out there. So the more you learn about the industrial control systems themselves, the better you will uh, be equipped to, uh, to uh, succeed in this domain. You will also need to learn about industrial plants and processes. Uh, like I gave the example of a substation. What does a substation even do? You know, how do transformers operate? Not at that level where you need to design them, but you, a client, the clients sometimes ask us to identify critical assets, which control systems are, components are critical. They have 100 PLCs. I want to know which PLCs are more critical than the others. Unless I know what those PLCs are doing, one PLC is controlling a water treatment facility, another is controlling, let's say, the water distribution uh, and there are five water treatment plant and 10 distribution points. So which one is more critical? Unless you know the processes, you will not be able to judge that. You will need to learn the operations and safety constraints. In plant environment, safety is paramount. You know, uh, the, any kind of uh, 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 safety incident, whether it impacts people or equipment is not tolerated. You will need to understand the data integration requirements how do these control systems integrate with the IT? How do they integrate with the business systems? What type of data is required? What type of communication is required? Uh, obviously, this is something that most of you may already know. You know, you will need to know the Cisco's and the Palo Alto's and Fortinet's and Juniper's and all that uh, in the Windows operating system and Linux. Uh, and of course, you need the knowledge of information security uh on what information security is what is drc what is security operations and all and last but not the least knowledge of ics specific cybersecurity standards extremely important because it is a relatively new field and that's why i want to focus on this slide a little bit more uh, because ot cybersecurity is relatively new field uh the the the, the the domain is not even mature yet. Even the standards, the so-called the most famous standard 62443, it's been out there for almost like six, eight years, different. Uh, it's a series of standards, by the way, it's not one standard, just like ISO uh, 27000. Uh, it is a, 62443 is also a series of standard, but even they're realizing that the first version is not very usable and they're revising the whole thing from scratch. So even though the, the domain is not mature, you will still need to learn about, let's say the 62443 and the NERC SIP and the NIST 882, which is uh, ICS specific or the American Petroleum Institute 1164. If you are going to implement any kind of security in a pipeline environment, you need to know that. If you're going to implement anything in the substation or power systems, you will need to know the NERC SIP. Then you have the country specific standards, whether it is for uh, Oman or every country have their own ICS standard. Dubai has their own ICS standard. Uh, UAE Department of Energy has their own um, IA standard which, with a very significant portion uh, of ICS. Uh, in Saudi, NCA, we know if anybody who is in Saudi, they know NCA. Um, they have recently, in addition to their ECC, they have recently released um, the control systems cybersecurity standard as well. I think it was two months, two, two, three months ago. So you will need to learn about these standards because 
our clients, they expect you to know these so that you can comply with the requirements of these standards. So this is something that you will be, I strongly urge you to, to uh, do that. Um, that's about it. I try to keep it a, a, a very high level, very short uh, in the interest of, I guess, uh, the audience. Uh, obviously, we can go into more detail on each of these slides and maybe if needed, we can have a separate session on it. Yeah. Uh, la uh, last question, I will just from, from the chat from Sonia. She is asking, do we need certified professionals for, to conduct OT assessment? If, if it is there, then what sets should we go for? What very certifications are required? Are any available? Yeah, very good question. And, and I'm sorry I missed that. I was planning on addressing that in the uh, uh, presentation, but I forgot. Uh, pardon me for that. Um, the most uh, uh, suitable one is the IEC, ISA IEC 62443. They have multiple certifications, uh, four level of certification. One is general, they call it fundamentals. And then there is one for risk assessment, there's one for design and implementation, and there is four for maintenance. So four different courses, four different cert certifications. If you pass all of them, you are certified as an expert. Or if you clear only one or two, you still have that certificate. You can add that as your credential. Uh, there are other like SANS has a couple of certifications. The most famous one is GICSP, not GISPP, GICSP. And the other one is GRID. These two are uh, IT and, uh, I'm sorry, ICS or OT specific. Uh, they are, all of these are quite expensive, I would say, because the I ISA one, each one is going to cost you maybe around $2,000, or if you are a member, $1,600 each. And the SANS one, of course, they always charge more money. It's about $8,000. Um, these are the only two, uh, or these are the only ones that I know of that offer certification specific to industrial systems. Uh, 